Good evening and welcome to Open Mind Special. This evening I have a very special guest called Kate, because I can't say her surname, it's another one. Welcome to the show and please introduce yourself. Uh, I'm very glad that I'm able to get to your show. Um, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Kate Turvalson. <laughs> it's not the easy. It's not the easiest name to say, and trust me, you're not the first one to struggle with that name. Yes, yeah. yeah. So, uh, and, um, yeah, I'm born and raised in, in Norway, mm -hmm. born in 1969, getting old. Mm. <laughs> Don't look um, good. You look good, you look good. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, I have actually been, my, my background, working background is actually a designer and uh, carpenter building houses for years mm -hmm. so uh, it's not that what people call people are thinking about me when they're thinking about the carpenter but yes i have been a carpenter for more than yeah, 25 years wow i mean so, i wasn't a carpenter in a career but my father was a carpenter and as i'm an artist most artists can put their hands to anything i did carpentry and i i built and kitted out a volkswagen camper van and a long barrow whatever transit van with chairs and so I've done my bit of carpentry yes women can do this stuff but it wasn't as um, a profession per se but that's interesting yeah yeah now, I, I haven't done the caravan thing yet but it's, it's on my list it's it was I mean it was amazing it was out of necessity way back in the day it was out of necessity and as I said, you know, um, I had the power tools, I had everything I needed and my dad, my dad had it all. And um, I just decided I'm going to do it. And uh, I just did it. It was a one off. I've done a lot of other things. I have a lot of um, like um, project carpentry tools now and I work on wood and I cut bar, you know, get tree, tree branches and I've made a snake, you know, and things like that. When I'm in that sort of mood, um, to me, it's just another form of art. And uh, You've got to be, I think you've got to be quite skillf skillful, skillful at it. Um, that if you're doing detailed art, I never did detailed art. Mine was just building, you know, things for camper vans and carving snakes. Because my father did miniature dolls houses and all the intricate things like that. So well, I, 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 I can't say I do those tiny little bits. I prefer the big things that is. You like the big yeah. things too. They're so much yeah, easier. Tearing down the walls or building up new walls or making yeah. kitchens or all these kind of things. Yeah. But that you little know? thing that you like that, know, it's, it's it's really, <laughs> What it is, is us women, we love getting hold of these power tools. That's what it is. And I, I mean, I just get carried away. I get carried away. Anyway, that we've digressed slightly because that's an interesting topic. So yeah. the the seat where what's going to happen now? You're we're going to flip this because we've got the background. But tonight we're going to speak about your recent book, a high Hy hybrids story, okay, yeah. and contact with ET. Um, could you please sort of start at the beginning of contact and and give us a glimpse of. Um, what is in the book and what you know would be exciting to go and purchase afterwards and to really get into the nitty-gritty of your story please yeah. share uh, my hybrid story i have it here um it's actually my bio so it's not just about the yeah. ufo or the contacts yeah. or counters it's also a kind of spiritual story Yes. Uh, when you are when you are seeing and meeting things from past lives, yeah. Um, what things? What what other people would call ghosts or yeah? yeah. There's all kinds of things in here, but it's, it's my personal journey. Lovely. Yeah. So, uh, but it, it actually it started very early. I, I was actually having my first encounter when I was just three years old. Mm -hmm. And for me, I find that story actually quite cute because. Now we are getting very close to the Christmas time, and uh, this also was happening very close to the Christmas time. Mm -hmm. I remember it very well. I always have had a very good memory, even if it was very, very mm -hmm. long back and I was a very, very young kid. Um, my mother, she has put me into the crib for the night and wanted me to go to sleep, but I wasn't tired. So I remember I, I was standing in the crib and I was standing there in this dark bedroom and I was looking towards those big windows that were on the other side of the room we were on on the second floor so there was no cars lights or anything like that that could 
hit into the window, window or anything like that. So it was quite dark. And I remember I was standing there and then suddenly the wall on the left side becomes suddenly a little bit kind of a blurry. Yeah. And then this gray creature was just coming out of the wall yeah. and gliding over the floor. And then he was standing in front of me outside the crib. Yeah. I, I guess he was a little bit taller than me. You, yeah. you must think about the size of the crib. We yeah. standing in it and this creature standing in front of it. So it was a little bit taller. And uh, of course, I was two years old and starting blah, 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 blah. But yeah. this creature did not respond back with talking. But it didn't take me long to understand that he was communicating in here. Yeah. So it was with images and, and feelings. Yeah. So uh, I, I actually, for me, I understood that he was there to see upon me if, to see if I was okay. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. So, uh, and for how long we were standing like this, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly he just glide away, glide away the same way that he came and disappeared out of the wall. Yeah. And the next moment I saw th this creature together with one more inside of a craft hanging outside the window and then they took off. Wow. And what, of course, in my little head, I was thinking, Yay, Santa Claus was here. Yeah, Father Christmas is done. <laughs> I mean, you would have, you would have died. I've got to say, you're the first person I've um, spoken to that's really given. And when you were saying it, I was going, oh, my God, I experienced, I wasn't three years old. I think it was about 13 or 12. It was in that anyway. And I was consciously awake. I was not in my crib. I was ironing my, my school uniform. And from the wall, I saw the greys come through. It was a black almond eyes first. And I've never been able to just to, you know, I say it, but I can never actually explain it as it was. Does that make sense to you? Um, as you just described, it's the same as what I experienced on, on an experience I, I consciously recall. But the yeah. way you explained it, they just come out, they just come out the wall. And it's like, I know for me being a lot older, I know how I process that. I can't imagine, yeah. But the Christmas is out there. Yeah, <laughs> but, 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 the thing, but the thing is that I, I was of course talking about Santa Claus to my mother yeah. and my father. And of course they were not having so much attention to it because it was getting closer to Christmas and they have told me about Santa Claus and all of that. But on the, on the Christmas Eve, she was taking me on her arm into the living room because I was going to meet Santa. And this person that showed up in there, Wasn't he it. had this plastic face, false beard and a red suit. And yeah. I was screaming and I was angry and terrified at the same time. Yeah. This was not my Santa. I did not like him. <laughs> I want my other Santa. <laughs> I God, I I before. And they had no idea what what is going on with that kid but um my mother she understood more than she was actually saying yeah but of course she did not want to say anything because my father that part of the family they have never experienced anything yeah. but on my mother's side they she has seen them my grandfather has seen them and yeah. several people in the family has seen yeah. them so uh, she kept quiet but she knew more than she was yeah, yeah. it is <laughs> um a gen i mean i'm i don't know if that's um exclusive to that but i know it, it's generational and my family um especially my brother um and i'm sure that's why my mother went the way she went um but many family members won't even admit it because back in the day coming from the eras of the 50s and 60s it wasn't something you would talk about it, um, um, I mean, the parent at that time. Some would, but on the majority wouldn't just share it until maybe later on in life. It's uh, and many of the experiences that have come on the shows have all said it's it's generational. Sometimes both sides, but normally it's one side. I'm sure with my family because my my father was exceptionally psychic. I'm sure I could have had two sides there, the Irish side as, as well. So, um, but yeah, that is a common phenomenon. It's, ge it's generation. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, do go on and carry it off there. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, so, well, that was my first close encounter. And uh, I think that that probably, uh, how to say it, um, Since, uh, since that first experience was actually nice, mm. there, was, there was no fear included 
at all. Yeah. Uh, I guess that also has um, made me the way I have been dealing with this kind of experiences later on in life. Yeah, yeah. That would but make there's, me... there's a lot of people that are having experiences, but they are terrified. But yeah. of course, it, it, it's very natural because if you're experiencing something that you have no idea what is, yeah. that most people would be terrified. It, it's just, yeah. if you, let's say that you're compa comparing this, this with animals. Yeah. <clears throat> let's say that a lot of places where we're human, we are collecting birds mm. to measure them, put some yeah. sign on them and all this kind of things. But of course, but, but of course, they will be terrified yeah. during the procedure when the humans are doing it. Yeah. And they have no idea why the humans are doing it. No. Of course, they are afraid, and then they fly off. Yeah. But, uh, and of course, that is very much the same response with us. That it when is. You I mean, something, you will be I've, I've heard some people say at the beginning they were terrified, but then later on, in hindsight, they understood. In my case, from a toddler, from a toddler too, I was seeing what we call dead people, a medium. And so I was so used to seeing dead people. When I saw them, I didn't could it wasn't in my frame of reference like you to call them et i thought they were dead midgets because mm. they were raised they were small and i thought of oh, all oh, dead children um that uh, my my mind couldn't comprehend anything other than the dead because i would physically see them as well so i was the same i had no fear um and it wasn't to weigh down the line that i became aware of what they were there was a little bit of fear then i mean it, well there was a lot when i realized it shattered me but not the actual experiences it was a shock of oh my god they do exist and that's what i've been seeing so i'm like you i never had any fear in childhood and i think and i've never had any fear of ever since so i think it does pave the way but as i was saying earlier on when you when we experience like when i said about eating the orange half each we experience it, but we could experience it differently. It's the same with contact with ET. We're not all going to experience it the same, are we? Um, so that's that's how it goes. Yeah. yeah. I got company. <laughs> you got a what there? <laughs> oh, you've got a fat one. I've got a fat cat here as well. My, I've adopted my daughter's. He's twice the size of that one. Oh, yeah, this, this, this one is actually the smallest one I have. This one is less than less than three thousand grams, but my biggest one is almost nine thousand grams. So my I adopted my daughter's cat Tiggs, and it's like bagpuss. It's like big as a dog. But anyway, yeah. we're digressing. <laughs> Cats behave yourself. Um, okay, so that was the first experience. Then when was the, the next experience with contact? And at that point, did you have an understanding who they were or not yet? Well, I did have an understanding because um, I was around 10 years old and uh, I did not understand why I was always treated differently than everyone else. Mm -hmm. And I always felt differently from everyone else. Yeah. So I became like an outcast yeah, know that. So, uh, so um, I was very much alone. So I was staying very, very often after my after my mother has went to bed for the night. I went out on the roof. I can sit there on the roof, looking at the stars and the moon, and thinking that I don't belong here. Please, yeah. somewhere out there, I my yeah. home is out there someplace. Yeah. Please come back and pick me up and take me home. I don't, I don't want to be here. Yeah. Uh, I guess I have been doing that a lot of times. And then one night I was doing this. I remember a bright light and then I did not remember anything more. And then I wake up in my bed next morning. Mm -hmm. And trust me, you are not climbing inside fr from the wall, from the roof and everything. And all of those things, sleepwalking. Trust me, you will fall down. <laughs> you know, I, I hear you. I'm, yes, I've had similar experiences, not on from a roof. So, so yeah, so I, I woke up next morning in my bed, and of course I was a little bit curious how I suddenly got there. Yeah, uh, I felt normal, but I lost my sense of smell. And uh, later on, I started to talking about other uh, civilizations, life forms, planets, all mm -hmm. kind of things. Mm -hmm. And I really gave the other kids in school a really good reason to be a bully uh, mm -hmm. or bullying me. Yeah, but you know what? They actually they stopped. Mm -hmm. And I, I even remember the face of the teacher when he was passing us because I had this group of kids around me when I was telling about these things. 
And I remember when I saw his face when he was going into class that, okay, that kid is nuts. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but um, after that, of course, when you don't have anyone to talk to, you will I mean, slowly, you, you, will, you will become quiet again. You will not talk, yeah. continue talking. I mean, that is another common, another common phenomenon. I mean, you've addressed what many experiences on the show and I do resonate with. Um, you're isolated, you, excuse the pun, you're an alien. There's a lot of bullying, you don't fit in. It's the same thing. You go inward, then you may find a group that you can communicate with and then that goes and you go back in. It's like a process. I always look back now and think, was, did I or did we test the water sort of coming out of it? What was the response and coming back? As if we've gone through decades testing the water. Is it time? Is it time? And we know it's time now anyway, but I, I yeah, I, that does make sense to me. It's mm. a very similar experience to others, yeah. 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 I, I have had, and, and of course, after that, it was several years, it was quite quiet. Yeah. Was that uh, your teenage years? Was that like your teenage? Well, uh, my teenage year, they, they were quiet, but there were so many other things that wasn't quiet during that time. Yeah, and yeah. trust me, uh, seeing dead people was uh, very yeah. common. <laughs> very yes, common I was going to say to you, there was an aspect <laughs> in my teenagers that the dead midgets, which I now know weren't, everything went paranormal. Everything went paranormal through the teenage years um, and, and uh, in, into my 20s. Um, and I mean paranormal. Everything you could think of under the sun. It was like... You're having to experience everything. You need to experience everything and connect with everything as one. Um, mm. Yeah, and many others resonate with that as well. It's not normal. It's not normal to uh, teenagers. It's not normal. Absolutely no. not. No, no, no. Oh, do go on. So yeah, <laughs> well, my my teenagers' years they were uh, normal when it comes to aliens. <laughs> uh, so I was. Um, this how old I was. I was in the early twenties. Yeah. When the things no mid twenties, mid twenties. Uh, yeah. When things starting to, it was like it was like this kind of a calling kind of thing. Yeah. That it's something. It's like something dragging you. That yes. Was, yeah. Get out. Yeah. 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 And uh, I remember I had a fiance back in those days, and he was not into this kind of things at all. Oops. So, but I said that, well, I have started with meditation. So uh, you just go to sleep and I will just sit there in the dark living room, my TV room, and just meditate yeah. for a little while. And then I will come. Yeah. Of course, I was not meditating. I was looking out the windows and I was doing that for three, three, four days. Mm -hmm. And then uh, three, four little lights together popped up and they were dancing around in the sky and saying, here we are. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I knew there was there, and um, this was happening a lot of times. Wow. So uh, I mean, that's a, that, that in itself, I mean, I've heard many, I've never called them on demand. I've been um, pulled to go and look outside, pulled to do something, and then they appear. But I've never intentionally, um, I know people that sit every night waiting and, they, and I know some that have done that for a while and then something comes. So I've never done it that way, which I love hearing different ways that contact can happen. Um, so when you saw these, these lights come up, what happened next? Well, um, after a little while, I was starting to connect with some people uh, in the UFO Norway, as their name was before, in the, one of the big UFO groups. And I remember I was down there down there visiting the leader of this group and we were sitting and talking about this kind of subject for the entire evening and it was getting late it was around 2 3 a.m or something in the night yeah. and i said oh, it is time for me to get back home and uh, i remember when i was getting out of, of, on the staircase and the door was closed behind me i felt like some something was watching me and i was thinking mm -hmm. yeah it's just me. We have been talking about this subject a little bit too much. So I just, just forget it. So uh, I was getting myself into the car and start driving back home. And it was around uh, 30, 35 kilometers mm -hmm. drive. And there was this uh, 
there was this kind of old highway, but there was uh, some part of this highway, there was no light mm -hmm. on the road at all. Yeah. So yeah. when I was coming to that place, I was going to put, um, um, what are you calling it, the long distance, the long lights. The full headlights, yeah. 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 I was going to turn them on, and in that moment, I it was like you're having this clear kind of sentence from up here and just into your head saying, turn the lights of the car off. Wow. And before my reasonable self could start arguing and saying that, well, I can't do that because if I do, I will not see the road. And I'll... Yeah. I did turn the lights of the car off. And of course, I did slow down. And if you can imagine, if you're sitting, when you're sitting inside the car and you're having this big, the, the, the front window, and you're having this a little, it looks like you can see the little hill in the distance. Yeah. And there was this big bright light that was really dancing up in the sky. And it was so grand that when it was coming towards you, it was like it was bright white. Yeah. And then it, when it goes a little further from you and sideways and all that, it yeah. turned yeah. to yellow, orange, and this kind of, yeah. and it was filling the entire window, the, the big screen. It was a really wow. And I was driving slowly and then it disappeared. And it was, you know, if someone has taken, used a camera with a blitz, so you can still see yeah. the blitz. Yeah, yeah. When it disappeared, I could still see the, the whole yeah. thing on the standing, still on the sky. Wow. And I was driving there without lights on the car, very slowly, Give me more, give me more. Oh, I was, <laughs> more. I was going to say, I was going to say, what was going on in your head at this point? You just said it. Give me more, give me more. Yeah, wow, give me more. what a display. <laughs> but the sad thing was, I was thinking that, okay, shall I call this guy in the Norway? And I said, nah, he needs to sleep. Yeah. And when I come back home, my fiance, he was sleeping. And I felt I was really wanted to uh, shake him and really tell him what's going on. But I was saying, no, don't say anything. No. No. I mean, you eventually slept that night, I presume. <laughs> oh, I did. Do you think, do you think, um, I don't like your word, do you think there was um, a physical contact? Were you on board the ship on that experience? Or do you on think that one? No. On that one? Not on that one. Okay. Because why I'm asking this, because, you know, it's, I, for, even for myself, you tend to know when they're, there's no sort of transference of your consciousness to another dimension or their ship or their, you tend to know, and I'm, I'm just checking out for personal, did, did, were you aware? Because there's times where you, you know, you just something, no, nothing happened. It was just the visual. I was mm. just, we're here. I just wanted to check to that one. And then anyone in the audience that, you know, if you're not sure, it's not always, you're not always taken, so to speak, if you witness, um, the lights in the sky. Okay, so what comes next on this hybrid uh, story? <laughs> well, um, I think there was around a year later. Mm. Um, I actually, I skipped my fiance because we were going to different parts. Yeah. Uh, I was going the spiritual way and he was the, on the still stuck way <laughs> on the same yeah. place. So, um, I decided that, I, well, I will go to a place called Ghoul Mountain, and I was going to stay up there for two months and work on my book. And this is really many years ago, so this book has taken a seriously long time to write. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and I brought my cat with me, so it was just the two of us up there. And I remember my friend from the of Norway, he was driving me up there. So uh, it was a very weird feeling when I was standing there in this cabin seeing the back lights of his car disappear. Yeah. I have no car. There's a very bad signal, so there's no electricity on the cabin. So you have to be very careful with the, with the little power that I did have on, the, on my phone. And of course, yeah. I could charge it with the battery, yeah. our battery and all of that stuff. And um, well, I was just supposed to stay there for two months. It did not last that long. <laughs> that was the quickest two months ever. Uh, it was a shame actually because I really loved it up there because it was so quiet that that you can hear the quietness. Yeah, yeah. There was yeah. no people around, and I had. How, to long, how long did you last? A little bit less than a week. <laughs> Do you know what? It's I'm I'm going to tell you. There's so many 
I've heard so many different stories of, of having, it's like we're training or you're training for something or you're preparing to do something and you go out and you go, no, 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 it's not yet. No, can't do this yet. Sorry, I'm off. And uh, yeah. Well, that, 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 that was not the case. You went back. Uh, you went yeah, back. for me, it was, um, I had a splendid time staying up there. Uh, oh. just, just me just me and the cat and of course the quietness it was really really nice and uh, the landscape was powdery white snow and black sky with the crystal why stars did you leave so early I, should, I will come to that <laughs> I, I one morning i woke up and i was seeing myself in the mirror and i was thinking that what the heck has been happening because i had this gray greenish dried matter, matter, matter from my eyes and from my nose and my nose was sore so it felt like I, I was getting sick or anything like that but that was not the thing that was most fascinating for me the thing is that it looked like let's say you are having like this kind of a grip thing but let's say my fingers they are round but let's say that they were sharp like a fork uh, like like a metal thing yeah yeah this kind of mark on my face Wow. up here and, and, and the thing is that this is not a pillow mark i can see a big difference from a pillow mark and this yeah, kind yeah. of mark and yeah. there's nothing in my bed that indicates anything that yeah yeah can be like this and of course all this with my nose my eyes everything and uh, but of course you ha i have to make my food i have to fire up the cabin i have to do all the that normal things to make the life running yeah because I just you, you can't just sit there and wander your heads out and just yeah 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 I'm with you power on so then all of this kind of goes in the background and of course my nose wasn't that sore anymore so it's become back to normal mm -hmm. but when the evening came something had changed I had changed big time because yeah. from like very much to stay there I became more and more like a restless animal in a cage. Mm -hmm. I think I was walking around in this cabin. Yeah. How many times? I don't know. And I was having the same magazine I was reading at least 20 times during that night because I did not want to fall asleep. Wow. Every fiber in my body told me that something had happened. Yeah. Yeah. And the next morning, I was able to get co connection with those people that own the cabin. So they, they said that, okay, we will come up during the day and we will pick you up and bring you back down to the society. Yeah, and you yeah. can stay with us for a day or two till uh, my friend in youth Norway will drive up there and come pick me up and take me back yeah. home. So <laughs> I, I was packed, ready to go. And of course, this place is super quiet. So I'm not a very scared kind of person. I'm not very easily spooked. But I was sitting there in the, on the couch and then suddenly two men stepping out into the veranda and they were talking at the same time out of nowhere when it comes to sound it was more or less almost like i was into the roof yeah and, <laughs> ah! and then it picked me up and we went back to their house and of course the first thing what are you doing when you're having a mobile phone that of course is to charge your phone yeah so when i put my charger into the into the wall everyone most people they know how um, how it sounds when a microphone is screaming that was the sound from my charger. Oh, yeah. Every light bulb in the house was annoying. Wow. If, if, if someone was putting something on the CD player, you could see the film, you can hear the talk, but you can also hear more or less several of the mechanisms inside the machine. Are you, are you saying um, your hearing become more sensitive? Super sensitive. Super sensitive, yes, I thought so. Yeah. Oh, it, it, it was horrible. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. I also was light sensitive, but the yeah. but the hearing was really really bad, and it was really bad for many many months. And I was uh, normally I, that that's a good thing having long hair because I was having paper cottons in my ears to get the sound of when people were talking down. Yeah, yeah. And people can come to me even today. Sometimes people can come to me and they can wonder, are you sitting here looking at the television and you don't have any sound on? Yeah, and I said, "Yeah, I have the sound on." Yeah, <laughs> I know. I'm very, with, very low. 
you just rem reminded me of something way back in the day, decades ago. And I would walk into like an area where there's loads of people, um, what we call a shopping center now. And I would hear every single thing. And I couldn't, I couldn't go back in. I'd walk into a shop to buy something. I couldn't stay in the shop. And I went, I don't know how long that lasted for that period. It may have been a couple of months, I don't know. But you just reminded me, I went through a very similar period. I don't think it was as extensive yours. I can't recall how bad it was. It was bad enough. I walked in the shop and said, I've got to get out. I can't. And I'd, I'd hold my ears because there was a, I've got to hold, pump the brakes there for that because I'm, I found for myself and many other guests on the show is, so did you find that your psychic um, traits, gifts, senses all become heightened through whatever occurred? It was, it was like tuned in, tuned up, higher frequency. Well, well, the, well, the thing is that when I came back, uh, when my friend picked me up and would take me back home, um, earlier he had bought, bought me this very nice perfume, but I have never had the sense of smell of it because my sense of smell disappeared when I was 10. Yeah. So I was normally putting it on to please him, not to please me. Yeah. Yeah. So this time I was putting it on, went out to his office just to turn around and walk inside again to wash it off because it was just too much. Yeah. Wow. But my sense of smell was back too. It was just, ah. Huh. <laughs> what, what do you think? I mean, we can't go forward until what do you think actually happened? I mean, this, what we call the side effects. The, the things that you spoke about, um, the sense of smell. I mean, I've spent a lifetime with sinus problems, literally a lifetime, losing smell, not be able to smell the perfume, spraying it all on, but I can't smell a goddamn thing. And then someone's saying, you've got way too much on. So I'm recognizing all them bits that you're talking about and many others will as well. What happened to you in that cabin, do you think? Yeah, the thing is that you from Norway, they had a connection with uh, a man that is, um, he was a hypnotist yeah. guy from, from Oslo, and uh, they were using him every time they had different kind of cases. Yeah. So um, we went into Oslo, and he was putting me on the, the hypnosis, and when I was back in the cabin, I was, that the, the thing that happened was that evening, when after I went to bed, suddenly there, suddenly there was this very, very bright light standing in the hallway mm -hmm. in, in, in shining in my, into my bedroom and there was this not this small creature but there was this very tall one mm -hmm. and but the thing that was very fascinating was that he had a kind of a transparent dress mm -hmm. on top of him like a skirt and everything mm -hmm. and it was shining it was like the, the, the sun was in this kind of yeah yeah, yeah. Thing. it was very beautiful to watch and in the next moment, it's like I'm, I don't think that I'm walking that much, but when I am uh, following him into the living room, it's more like I'm floating in the air. And then yeah. suddenly there are these three of the smaller creatures that I've seen before. Yeah, They're yeah. standing around me and they are putting this kind of a helmet on top of my head. So it, it sounds like a bad horror movie from the 70s. Because mm -hmm. I'm having this kind of needles going into my ears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm having this kind of thing that goes around here with the kind of forks that's going up into my nose. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, yeah. And of course, and then I could also see and feel those kind of the grip that yeah, this, yeah. this thing had on my head. Yeah. So it was, so I understood it was very important that because of the procedure that they were going to do, that this helmet was really stuck. Yeah, yeah. So and in that in that moment when they were doing this, there for a split second, I remember what happened to me when I was 10 years old. It was very much the same thing, kind of. Uh -huh. And in that moment, I'm asking them, please don't let me remember anything else or anything more of this. Yeah. And from that second, everything turned gray. Wow. So this hypnotist guy, he was working on me for one hour, two hours more. It was a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. And he could not break it. Wow. I mean, I've heard, I mean, obviously with mine, when I just black out and then next thing it's the next day, um, some things I do recall, and I've never wanted to go to a hypnotherapist and recall um, to find out any more. Um, it's just, some of us just don't want to do that. The, what I do recall, um, 
as I said, I am aware of what I do recall and the knowing I have is, it's like, you know, I, my most recent was last Christmas and they, and these were not the small greys, these were tall, like Arcturian blues with the biggest eyes I've ever seen. But it was, how are you, tilting their head. They were te telepathic, how are you, just check in, then boom, I'm gone. And it's like they're always, I don't know if they're curing or if they're upgrading or if they're protecting. I don't know what it is, but I've always felt um, while I, I didn't recall is because they didn't want to traumatize me too much because of the human life I was having, which oh. was extremely traumatizing as a child. So I see it that way. So, um, you know, I, would I ever do hip, 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 no, not, not my truth is no. Um, if, um, but for some, it has to happen. It's that truth, their path to go. So I yeah. would say you're, we, you know, we, we just wanted to figure out what's happened. Yeah, yeah. See if you, if you could get more answers, because I knew that something had happened. But of yeah. course, they could see it on me that something had happened. Yes, absolutely. So, uh, of course, I was very changed when I got back. And um, for me, I think that it, it did, I think that they in reality did that must have shattered everything you thought about <laughs> reality yourself. And oh, fuck, I would have, you know, that must have been one of those moments. Well, um, actually, no, no, no. <laughs> And yeah. there has been so many different things that has been happening my entire life and up. So uh, I have always had a wider perspective on life. I'm with you. No, I'm with you. It's just a question. I mean, you know, some. I remember the first time I realized these beings existed. Um, it, it, for that day, my my life just shattered, but in a positive way because then it broke down and deconstructed. The reality, I realized why I didn't fit in. I understood why nothing resonated. I understood. So in that way, but however, and they were like, I was going to say, because what's, would you say that each, even though it never sort of shattered you, and I don't mean in a negative way, do you find that after each contact, because experiences have spoke about this, it shifts their consciousness or it shifts their drive or their pull to do something which normally they wouldn't think they would do. Did that happen to you? I'm not sure if I understand your question. I, sorry, my English is atrocious. Um, <laughs> you know, look at you. You speak two languages. I do speak Arabic, but unless you speak Arabic, I still couldn't explain it in Arabic. Each time um, experiences speak about, each time they have contact, mm. something done, whether procedure or not, or just seeing the lights, after that, either their, their own individual consciousness expands or they get a knowing or they their path shifts and they research or go on a different um, trajectory to where they were going. Did okay. any, is that uh, make sense now? No, actually okay. no. Um, as I said, uh, the things that uh, when I've been experiencing things, it has been uh, coming. I'm with you. Like this. No, I'm with you. That has normally always fitted together with with the close, with that kind of experience. Yeah, I'm with but you. But I know that over the time that things has changed and have shifted. Yeah. Um, when it comes to me and cosmology, quantum physics, and all of that. Yeah. I have yeah. zero education in it, but yeah. I am working on a book on it. Uh, I, this book also takes several years to do. Yeah. Uh, this one here um, is the creation where. Physics and consciousness meet. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, where I will, yeah, explain that, everything that I have been getting down yeah. from the biggest picture to the absolute smallest. Brilliant. That's really interesting. Again, um, quantum physics seems to be a real common one with experiences. Everyone uses it differently. Each experiencer has seems like a job to do with that. Um, and astrophysics. Mine was a neuroplasticity, neuroscience, um, and quantum physics. They were the areas I researched for. No idea why I researched. I was downloaded. I had, no, I had numbers all over my front room wall. My children were small. I had equations that even I didn't understand. And then it shifted somewhere else. So 
Um, I want to, I mean, you're going to have to come back on another show and talk about that book. But tonight, because we're going to do another one, it's yeah. coming on Inception podcast, but we're going to do another one on the other book. Tonight, but, but, I want to keep... But the thing is that the, the good thing is with, with this book is that there's no, uh, it's no formulas there. Mm. I don't need formulas to understand yeah. the physics. No. Uh, because when, when, when you're getting the downloads, uh, for me, I'm getting the downloads like film. Yeah. Yeah. And when you are getting the downloads just once, they are like, it's like they have become like a part of you. Yeah, no, I hear you. I totally, I totally resonate with what you're saying. But we're going to do another show on that book, okay? Because that's going to so, be... Uh, and, and of course, you, you can wonder what they have been doing with me over the years. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, then we also come to the word with implants. Uh, that was actually a quite a funny thing because for many, many years, I've been hearing a lot about implants and I have been joking about having implants. Yeah. But the thing is that I had this triangle shaped thing on my neck mm-hmm. that felt weird. So I was thinking, hmm, perhaps that's an implant. I was joking about that too for a long time. And then a friend of mine, in uh, he was living in Canada back then, Sid Goldberg, and he was working with several cases with uh, implants. Mm-hmm. So he told me, why don't you buy this? One of those very small neodymium magnets they're very small and they're very strong. They're, this kind of magnets is not the same magnets as they are putting on the fridge and yeah, so yeah. on. Yeah. So and I said, okay, I can do that. And trust me, that was one of the moments I could actually feel that I could say I had this, oh. Shit, man. You can moment. swear on the show. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah, that's <laughs> where so, because, because, as I said, one thing is to joke about it for years and years and years. And then you try it on. Mm-hmm. And it sticks. Yeah. I, so have, never I, I, I have this one here. Go on then. Go of for it. Now I have some makeup on here. Wow. You can see it still sits. Yeah, yeah. And that side, yeah. But if I take it a little bit out of side, let's say here. It'll fall off. It will fall off. Yeah. And of course, um, a friend of mine, he said that, okay, why don't we have a little research party? <laughs> so I said, okay. And it, because for, first I tried it here and in this, it was sticking. Mm-hmm. And then he said, of course, since you have had this problem with your nose always, why don't you try it on the nose? Yeah. And as you can see, it sticks. I've never tried it on, never tried it. I've always had the problem here. On the t- and I've got two scars, by the way. I don't know where they come from. Well, not scars, but they're like weird dips. And I've always had sinuses, always sinus. And I've heard about these recently. Only recently have I heard about these, and I've never tried it. But you know, I may get hold of one and try it. Just go. Yeah, well you, 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 you should. So when we had a little research party, well, we got a little shocked because I we discovered I have two here. Wow. Two here, here. Two here, yeah. Five in the five in the front here, all the way down my spine. Wow. And later on, we also figured out I have several more in the front down to my navel. Yeah. And we haven't bothered to <laughs> go further. <laughs> well, have you found out what what these were implants were for? Why they were implanted? No. Yeah. Well, some say that why don't you you remove them? And I said, well, I, I don't want to remove them because they are symmetrical placed. Yeah, I mean... So they, they, they are there for a purpose. And for me, I, if they have something to do with my, the, the, how, easy I can, how easy I can get the downloads and things I want, yeah. I will not mess with that because I like those downloads. No, oh, I agree with you. I've, I haven't tried the magnets and I'm going to have to go and search and get myself some. And if I've got a feeling, because it's always my sinuses, um, I've got a feeling it's definitely there. I wouldn't want it removed, if, and especially the time it's, if they're there, I'm not saying they are, guys. I just don't know. I've never, you know, I've heard about it. You know, like synchronicity, a lot of my guests have started to talk about it. And I went, oh, I've never tried that. I might just try it, you know. Um, I wouldn't want them removed. Why would I? Because yeah. uh, and, and of course, I also threw also for you of Norway. He had this chiropractor back in those days that he has had his own X-ray machine. Ah. So they there was a 
since they are very hush hush, they were sneaking me up the back back door and in there. I was not even in the journals. Yeah. I was just in there taking the pictures. Here, do you have the CD? Take off and you'll send them over to the US or the Canada for analyzing. So they find when they were really zooming in big time, they find this little tiny black. It was looks like it looks like rice, mm -hmm. rice corn, but they are very very small. Yeah. So they could actually find it. Wow, my gosh! I mean, the, the, this tonight we 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 talking about the hybrid story, and before we, I mean we we're going to come back and do another show because there's too much you know to do within a short period of time here but this the title itself a hybrid story you are a hybrid yeah and the point of that when where and how was that recognition that knowing when did that occur how did that come about i think that that has been coming about over the years and it has been stronger and stronger and stronger because um because of uh, how to say it, um how you've been feeling from from childhood and on yeah and um, how different you always have been all the things that you have been capable to do yes uh and the things that you are now still capable to do and even even more mm -hmm. and that you also you have a purpose yeah you, you have you have things to do I'm, I'm, that resonates with me um, and many others I'm hearing the same. I mean, this sort of like last month or so has been basically in my reality, it's all about hybrids and, and you know, it's, you know, like you, you mull over, use discernment and, and it keeps coming that, you know, a certain civilization of being came here into the role, conscious being to play the human being to adapt, to evolve, to, and it's just, it, at the moment, it's all like that. So I always ask, I did to Jacqueline Smith, the wonderful Jacqueline Smith I had on last week, um, who's a hybrid as well. I'm obviously, I'm seeking truths as well to expand my consciousness. I'm aware the hybrids, I've seen them. I was shown them when I was younger, walking on the earth, the children, and I always said the height they walk, they walk among us. I've always said it for decades, but never quite had it in the context I needed to. But now it's all just falling into play. Um, so, on the record, so re really, you, you recognizing your hybrid, it was a slow pro process, which I think is with many, and it just didn't deter you in any way. You didn't think, ooh. On that, on the back of that, that leads to the segue why are you here? as a hybrid? M m for many reasons, it's not just the one. Mm -hmm. um, I think that a lot of my life, um, that is actually one good thing by um, being kind of living, living on the outside. Yeah. It's because that when you are living on the outside, kind of, then you can study yeah. humans. Yes. Yes, people watch us. <laughs> yeah, you, you can you can actually study humans in so many <laughs> levels. And of course, yeah. I've been studying myself too in many, many, yeah. all, almost that every is level. That's so true. That is and so true. Um, then you're not that very, you're not that easily dragged into conflicts or anything else. Because yeah. instead of seeing oh, yeah. something from just one side or both two sides, you're normally you're seeing things in three sides. Mm -hmm. So you, you will find better solutions. Yeah. And um, is like for example now this um how to say it um in these days many people they are so focused on the hate yeah. corona people are getting more and more aggressive yeah and all of that and i think that um it's a little bit dangerous to say it because it sounds a little bit like new age and it, it's not um but the thing is that if you're going to evolve as humans mm -hmm we need to change so much yeah. in here yeah. to move forward because we our technology is running off. Yeah. But we as humans, we are standing still. Yeah. No, I hear we you. We are still having the same kind of arguments about property, they are jealousy, they are 
Mm-hmm. They are all the range with yeah. feelings that people are still stuck here. Yeah. And I just say, for example, when it comes to learning, mm-hmm. learning possibilities. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you're a little kid, you are, let's say you're, you're learning to read. Mm-hmm. And from that little age, that, that, that thing, when you're learning to read in that way, that's the way you are reading more or less the rest of your life. Okay. Instead, you can go in and really learn super learning yeah. and super remembering and all these kind of things. And I think that all of these kind of things, kind of, you should really, really learn to read and study and all these kind of things before you actually go into schools at all. Yeah, no, I, I have no issue with that. I, I, I totally agree. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold you, the pump the brakes on that. I'm going to say, so there are many reasons why hybrids are here, but would you say, does it resonate with you? I'm throwing it out there, that the hybrids are here. I mean, I'm coming off the back of my experiences is from my truth and asking the question, they're here for what, uh, what you just mentioned, what needs to be... Um, resolved in humanity they're here to initiate that to support that um, to share knowledge to share there are other choices to share there are other ways yeah. does that resonate with you because yeah. that's the sort of thing that that comes through me hence why i do the podcast and i do the shows it's yeah. It's not off out of glorious mind that all of this started. That's for sure. Um, no, uh, the, the, before I was getting too much into the super learning thing, is that um, when people are so focused on all the hatred and all of this kind yes. of thing, yeah. uh, if you are thinking about the world uh, in physics way, yeah, uh, think about the world is in the what you're sending out, mm-hmm. you will get back. Yes, we are like magnets. We are sending in and out. Yes. information all the time yes and people are sending out and attract all the things that they don't want yes most of, most of the time yes they so are because if they want love they and they're living in a um, misery life mm. and they want love they are so stuck and glued to their habit because that misery life that's the life they know yeah so they want they want let it go so but if they really really want the other things they have to, they have to change yes their perspective on the things that they want yes. and focus on that yes and then they can change then I, I always the say around them will change yeah, you have to you have to do the work on yourself um you have to you know we've all got shit you have to do the work uh, i call it um because from the truth that i come from self-realization on duality um, you just have to deconstruct the human experience and work on all the belief systems, all the concepts. And if you react to something, instead of blaming another, ask yourself, why am I reacting? Hmm. Why, why am I blaming? It's something reflecting back to me that I need to, and it could be past trauma, past experience energy, but you to recognize, the first step is to recognize it's coming from ourselves. Yeah. And so, so, so that, that's the problem with most people that they, they will, let, let's say when it comes to partners, yeah, they want another partner to make them happy. To be, uh, to be clone them. Yes. Yeah, well, not that clone, but, but they, they, they are actually putting the responsibility on the partner to make partner. them happy. Because if that partner does not do or say what you want them to say, you yeah. will be miserable. Yes, exactly. And then you will try to change them to become yeah. that person that you want. So you will not be miserable. So it, it's, it's all wrong. And I think that if you want a really healthy re- relationship with other humans or your partner or whatever it, it is, you have to change. You can't okay. make them to change, but you have to change. And if they're still um, not wanting to give you the things that you actually feel that you need, well, then you just, you, you move on. Yeah. You don't cling to them. You just say goodbye and you move on. I agree. That's I mean, simple. It's, it's, it happens. I mean, in the end, it does get easier and easier. At the beginning, it, it's, it's, you know, like, oh, my, but it does get easier. But it's the only way. I mean, it's a point of realizing you have a choice. 
you know, um, how, I mean, I've, I've said on my show many times, way back in the day, I was a right arsehole and I played the victim. I was Oscar winning victim. I played and blamed everyone. I, if, you know, I'd, bl I'd blame the wind if it blew my skirt up. I'd blame, you know, I was just <laughs> one of those. And the point comes where you say, I can't stand, I don't, who is this person? I don't want to be this person. What is this? I can't be this. But then it comes to a point you realise, ah, oh, it's me. It's me. Uh, they're pressing my buttons. Why have I got this energy in me? And so I had to start, and, and I've said it many times as well. People say, I went through the dark night of the soul. No, piss off. I went through decades of the dark night of the soul. Oh. Decades, peeling away, peeling away, you know, and falsely assuming, oh, I've done it. I'm awake. Yeah, right, boom, comes the next one. I go, ah! And then to the end, you don't get the outcome. You just keep going on the journey. You keep going on the journey. We have slightly digressed off. However, I want to come back to the hybrid story and to um, let's use the word the purpose, because I've encountered other hybrids that have the same sense of this love for humanity, for the evolution of humanity, this empathy, non judgmental even when they are our souls, they don't judge them, you don't judge, um, that when you think about it, for, for anyone in the audience that feels they are had an experience or something that they don't quite understand, if you listen to the experiences that come on the show and the hybrids as well, I can look back and say all that I went through, maybe I didn't understand on the way, but looking back now, if I can make a difference now, that was all worth that. Mm. They're, they're, I mean, that was, and I am going to get the magnets and try them. I'll find, you have to give me the name. Uh, I want to see if, because my nose is this mm, nasty, nasty, but it's something about the hybrids. And, and it's personal to me because I used to be shown like in film roles where they would be, what they would do, how humans would behave. This is how a human gets angry. Way back, I was shown how to become a human, something like that. And I've always known that they're here. And it's only recently that there's an understanding talking to hybrids and ET contactees and that, that they're here, not in a negative form. They're here, then it's not transhumanism, by the way. Um, they're here to balance because we live in a polarity. We live in, an, in a polarity experience to bring back the balance to the human race. Um, maybe more of the feminine, you could say that, I don't know. Maybe that's imbalanced, I don't know. But we have a lot of jealousy, rage, rape, killing, judgment, racism, blaming the other for when something goes wrong. And we, our track record is not very good, is it, at the moment? No. no. The, 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 the thing is that we are both masculine and feminine. And the thing is that we need to, let's say if, if you have, Actually, yin and yang is actually a good example of that. You. If yeah. you are standing with one foot in both sides, yeah, and you are and you are standing on balance, good balance feet in both sides, yeah, you are not unsecure when it comes to the feminine side, or you are not unsecure when it comes to the masculine side. Yeah. You, you are both, and you can take from each side when you yeah. need it. That's it to bring balance. I met, I've had many male guests on the show that are totally balanced between the two. And it's wonderful. I mean, I'm, I'm pulling it back again to the hybrids, their purpose for being here, um, because I know people are people that aren't even experiences are talking in negative connotations. They're going to take over the world. And they're going to do what they're going to do. Um, for me, the hybrids that walk upon the earth. Some you'll recognize, some you won't. Way back in the day, they were very recognizable. Even when I, I remember being about 10 and going on a train and I just recognized another being in a, in a human form, but the eyes and, and I was aware, like the watchers, I was aware they've always been here, but now they're so integrated. Would you say that the hybrids like yourself are the completion of what we could label, because we can't find another way to express it, of the hybridization of, for the evolution of humanity is this generation. Would you say that? 
and we've got more coming through. You know, like the beginning, in the beginning it was different. And even the contact experiences were different way back. They were different. It wasn't like what happens now. Now it's like consciousness or it's um, metaphysical or it's, it's totally different to the nuts and bolts um, contact. Well, for me anyway. Um, so would you say it's just been, I don't know how long or whatever in the timeline of humanity that we're at the conclusion now where the hybrids come in and there is full contact? Do you see where I'm going with this? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to because you, you're talking my, a my, lot. My English is terrible. <laughs> my English. But, um, I, I, I think there's um, a lot more out there. Mm. Um, but the thing is that over the years I have learned, uh, well, well, the reason why I actually made my I have a storybook is that I wanted to help other people that has these kind of experiences yeah, to yeah. to perhaps get make perhaps give them some answers yes no of, of, of what they are ex, are experiencing mm -hmm. and also perhaps giving them the strength to come forward yeah uh, but of course I think that if if you are in that state that you feel that it's necessary for you to actually that you need to talk with someone yeah about this then you should be very careful with with kind of person you find. Yes. Because there are so many different kinds of people out there, even in the UFO groups. Yes. You can go into a UFO group that where you are supposed to feel safe yes. and you're posting your stuff and you will be attacked big time. Yes. So uh, it's getting just worse and worse and worse for it. So I think that... It was like that think... 30 years ago. It, uh, I approached them first and I was attacked and I pulled away. I pulled away and I never went back. Um, yeah, no, I, I've been attacked many times and I'm still being attacked, but um, no more. Now I'm more feeling more like yeah, I actually know. redrawing myself again because yeah. I don't need to use time. I don't bother to use time to um, not protect myself. It's not the word. Um, I don't need to defend myself. No, no. Uh, for me, I know what I experienced. Yeah, I yeah. don't do drugs, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do anything. You don't I'm not struggling with hallucinations or anything like that. Yeah. I know what I have been experiencing all my life. Yeah. Uh, I have been twisting and turning in so many ways yeah. Yeah. to, to yeah, analyze yeah, yeah. My, my, the things that I have been experiencing over my entire life. So I'm standing very well in my both two shoes. Good for you. But, yeah. but, but still, so again, I come to a point that I, I, I don't need to... I don't bother to defend myself. I say, okay, that's your belief. I know what I have done and Absolutely. what I, I, I've experienced. I'm in, I'm in totally so, I, so I think that I will, I will use my time for better purposes. Yes, yeah. So for me, I think that when I hopefully finally I can be done with this one, that one can hopefully uh, make more people to see what they are, where they come from and how, how we are all connected and uh, how we can go forward. And I think that if people understand more about what to actually to be a human at all, mm -hmm. uh, I think that just by having that knowledge, yes, they will understand much more and they will act differently. Yes. I, I resonate with anything you just said. And I think also um, hybrids talking, also it will... Um, awaken something in other hybrids at the right time, at the right place. Um, there isn't a select few in humanity. Um, there are more than, uh, we're not gonna go into numbers because it's irrelevant, but just so to know, you know, is if anything that um, Kate said that resonates, or, we, or I've said that resonates and you, you want to find out more. I mean, we haven't got enough time to really go deep into this because we could go really deep but we haven't, but Kate will come back. Um, before we close the show, could you share with, with the audience where they can get hold? It is on the advert, by the way, but where they can get hold of your books, get hold of you, the time. Yeah, if, if, if they go to www.katetorvaldsen.com, that, that, that's my homepage, and they can find my book, uh, 
as an in the English, Norwegian, and uh, Italian, and also as an ebook. Lovely, uh, lovely. And the links will be up with this. The links are up already on the advert, and the links will be up on this. Um, your high, your high bit story. I mean, we must have just touched upon a couple of percent of it. Obviously, time allowing. Um, is there anything you want to leave um, for the with the audience about your journey? Anything you would like to leave? To as a positive, you know. I think that is very important that uh, <coughs> um, when you see how the world is changing these days, mm -hmm. it's changing rapidly. It's like a tornado going yeah. faster and faster and in a negative direction. Yeah. Um, I think that people should not be afraid. And I think that also the priority of people that, that should be know yourself first. Yeah. Because if you know yourself and you're standing steady and you're on two feet, yeah. you, you will not be that afraid when you, you will deal, deal with changes much easier. Yeah. <coughs> so I think that that's the main. Yeah, and I second thing. that. I, I second that as well. Uh, and you know what I say, guys, turn off your TV for 72 hours, experience your own life, whatever it is, arguing, fighting, Shout in your life, and 72 hours later, you turn on that TV, and that's not your reality. You're not even part of it, and you'll recognize it. It just takes 72 hours. Just try it. I'd like to thank you so much for coming on. Um, I'm gutted we couldn't get more details, but obviously, it's time, but we will do it again. And I want to thank everyone for watching Open Minds. Please like and subscribe. It's not about me, it's about the guests that come on to get their information out as far and wide as possible. And it's all free, free access to them. Um, I would recommend um, you go to, the link is on um, the info page, go to Kate's site and get her book. And I'm sure you might find it will just change your life, especially if you're just about to become aware that you're a high, you are a hybrid. Um, it happens to the best of us at some time. It gets, it will, you will get there. Um, and if you don't, if it doesn't resonate, if you put it to one side and say, wow, what experiences Gloria and, um, you know, Kate has, and just put it to one side and enjoy your own experience and your own spiritual journey. On that note, thanks a lot, Kate. And Pussycat, yeah. in, having, you know, getting a fame, is it a she? Uh, this is Gizmo, it's a she, yeah. She. Gizmo, oh, what a wonderful name. Um, her um, debut on Zoom on Gloria's Open Mind. I'm running a Zoom later and there's a dog that comes on. It's a pug, pug Zoom yeah. alone, I call it. And we, it's, they, all the animals come on the Zoom room now. And wherever they are, they're just cats, dogs. They just join in now the conversation. It's getting ridiculous, pushing us out of the way. He's gorgeous. Oh, look at that. Okay, on that note, thank you for watching Open Minds. Until the next conversation, thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>